I'm Sam Waterston. You're watching Visionaries, proud to present its 11th season on public television. Visionaries is produced in partnership with the Ash Institute for Democratic Governance and Innovation at Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government. Visionaries was made possible in part by the Exposition Foundation, Incorporated, the Kenneth A. Scott Charitable Trust, a key bank trust, and by Dr. Fred Eshelman. Additional funding has been provided by the following. Sometimes you read the paper and watch the news, and it seems like there's more bad news than good in the world. But you know what? It's just not true. I at least can hold on to something. That there's something, that it, maybe it's small, but there's something that I'm doing to make a difference. It's just a feeling that you have. If you can help people, you have to. There's no alternative. Every child has potential that we just can't know. And so to my mind, that's what we're doing. We are saving potential for the future. Sometimes the secret to technological innovations is the old truism, less is more. In Seattle, they had a problem. Runoff from streets went into a modern drainage system that sped the water quickly out of the city into streams that led to the ocean. Salmon used those streams, now filled with pollutants, to spawn. Enter a bunch of city planners willing to think outside the box, and you have a natural, holistic solution that not only saves the salmon, it transforms ugly neighborhood streets into beautiful vistas. You have to see this to believe it. Formerly, we had coho salmon, we had chum, we had sea run cutthroat, and it was a, in a way, sort of a Garden of Eden. After the development, we lost all of that. I'm ready to let the rivers wash over me. I'm a member of a group that started in 1979 because we wanted to restore the salmon that had been either fished out or lost to the pollution from the development that happened in this whole area. In how to restore a creek system, we have to take care of the runoff from all the surrounding area. We are headed right now up to the area called the Piper's Creek Watershed. It's an area that, over the years, will become developed with a more formal infrastructure. And we can do it two ways. We can either put in our traditional two sidewalks and piped stormwater system, or we can try a new way of building natural drainage systems and actually cost less to build. Our traditional means of managing stormwater was to put the water essentially in a pipe, move it from somebody's property or business where it was flooding, and move that water, discharge that water to a receiving water body like a creek or a lake or a shoreline of some type. We had to reduce the volume of stormwater that was reaching those same systems. We had to reduce the different kinds of pollutants, the metals and the petroleum hydrocarbons that were reaching those systems. But there was a lot of skepticism out there as to whether we could do the, that type of work, whether we could design something that uh, was holistic in nature and sustainable, but still did the job of protecting people's homes from flooding and still did the job of managing stormwater. It's a quiet street, like you can tell. In the first meeting, we told the residents out there that we wanted to redesign their street. We wanted to make it environmentally sensitive to, in terms of the impact from a runoff to the creek, that we wanted to minim narrow the street and traffic calm it, make it so that people wouldn't want to drive fast on it. So when I first met you, it was at our first community meeting. You were the ones 
who understood the connection of what we were trying to do with the stormwater with the downstream impacts to the salmon stream. That's so important. I mean, we're, by heart, we're both really environmentalists. And, um, and to know that the oils from the cars and the pesticides. We started looking at different types of stormwater management techniques that, that was not about pipes. And one concept was the idea of a swale. When I first started at Seattle Public Utilities, this project had already been initiated. Um, the concept somebody had drawn on paper of, we're, we want to do a street development, but we want to do it in an alternative sort of way. And they called it the Street Edge Alternative C Street. And if you were to look at it from an aerial view, you know, as the road curves, that gives us different pockets where we can have our swale bioretention systems. Up the street behind me, we have a, a street typical of many in America. We have very little formal infrastructure. We have gravel shoulders. We have a ditch. And the ditch conveys the water, even on light rain days like we're having today, immediately to the stream. Now, down the street here, on the project street, we've created a system of swales that are interconnected by trench drains, which you can see in the driveways. And the water is absorbed by two feet of amended soils in the bottom of the swales. The swale itself, the depression serves an important function to hold water, but it's not just the open area that you see at the surface. Way, way below a good 18 to 24 inches of material is there to absorb that rainwater just like a forest soil does. We cut runoff by 98%, and that was a really remarkable result. During the design of these types of projects, we really need to work directly with the homeowners uh, quite extensively. Um, as you can see, the properties are very close to where our systems are. The project managers work directly with the homeowners to help provide access during construction, to help us discuss the removal of certain vegetation that is bordering private property and the street right of way. Some people had very particular concerns about the types of plants that were going to be put in or parking issues. And we felt that somebody was always available to talk to. The typical old-fashioned street improvement was a linear sidewalk, a typical curb, five-foot planting strip. There really weren't any decisions to be made. With the Natural Systems Project, the decisions are almost endless. <laughs> They're almost mind-boggling. but. The degree to which we interact with property owners in making sure those decisions are appropriate for them really makes the project something that they own, both during its construction and when it's complete. Yeah. It's an interesting social experiment. I don't know. We're getting <laughs> well, to know our neighbors. Susan, Sean and Vicki. Right. We're very good friends with yeah, Sean and Vicki now. We know all our neighbors now. now. And there's much more of a community element now in this neighborhood. You see people uh, walking down the street, strollers, people with their families. You see people talking at the mailboxes when they go to gather the mail. There's just been amazing results beyond the environmental benefits of this project uh, for the community and the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I know that we envision whole areas, whole watersheds that can treat our stormwater this way, and I think that'll happen long after I'm retired. <laughs> but you have to have a vision, you have to start somewhere, you have to have a model that people can look to, and it has to be technically correct. The city of Seattle, I think, has a vision. This city is populated by many people who strongly believe in the value of the environment. We have hundreds of kids that are growing salmon to plant in this creek. And what do they hope for? They hope for a return of those salmon so that they can successfully spawn and then go forward in a sustained way. There's a fragility of life. And there is nothing that is more poignant than to see these salmon come back and spawn. And the kids will come down and they'll say, 
That's the salmon that we raised in grade five when I was in Viewlands Elementary School. That's my salmon. And it gives them that feeling of, of continuity and hope for life. And I think we need that. For the Visionaries, I'm Sam Waterston. See you next time. I'm ready. If you would like more information about Visionaries, the organizations profiled, or would like to recommend a story, please visit our website at visionaries.org. Visionaries is produced in partnership with the Ash Institute for Democratic Governance and Innovation at Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government. Visionaries was made possible in part by the Exposition Foundation, Incorporated, the Kenneth A. Scott Charitable Trust, a key bank trust, and by Dr. Fred Eshelman. Additional funding has been provided by the following. Oh.